Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to finish up this week's theme of groove, looking at songs that are either groovy or have sections in it with heavy amounts of groove. Today we get to check out a group that I'm super excited to. I've listened to them on a live stream before, but I've not had the chance to actually break down a full reaction and analysis to them, and I'm ready for this. So the band is called Moon Hooch, and this is just some phenomenal stuff right here, assuming it's going to be anything like what I've heard before. So let's dive in and see what they're bringing to the table with Candlelight. I really like the hi-hat rhythm alongside this. The hi-hat placement is interesting too, being left hand rather than right. Yeah, going for that alternating open and closed I hat. Really beginning to open the sound of this uh, section. That was excessive. <laughs> Dang. Getting a full four bar breath playing at this volume too. Yeah, I like how the drummer pulls out the alto, or the, uh, not the alto, yeah, the alto sax. Dang, they have a ton of instruments. That is some really great breath control. Ooh, those were some spicy dyads. Bringing back the hook. Yeah, some really nice movement going underneath this section too. Yeah, that's exactly what I was expecting from those guys. Um, man, that's just... Oh, 
I really enjoy the, what they're doing, what their whole their whole vibe. I want to look this up real quick just to double check though, and make sure before we move on that this is a tenor sax. Because I would hate to give wrong information. Oh no. No, I didn't say tenor, I said alto. I was like, wait, that's not it. I, unless I'm missing something, the tenor and the alto are very similar. What is the um, the higher pitched one though? Oh, the soprano saxophone. Yep, that'll do it. Although it looks like the sopranos also come in curved variants, so... Um, interesting. I've only seen the straight ones. Um, and I don't know what that other instrument was that looked like it was uh, made of wood or possibly plastic. It was black. It really stood out against all the brass that was being exhibited through the rest of the saxophone uh, family. Uh, that thing was interesting. But, yeah, so I absolutely love what they're doing here. They're, they're taking two aerophones, typically saxophones, but, uh, you know, I don't know what that, that black one is, so it could be something that's not in the saxophone family, uh, and playing it with some effects, it sounds like, on top of it, possibly not a lot. Uh, they're not really changing up the timbre too much, but they are adding a little bit of uh, extra... Uh, width and probably a little bit of compression on top of it just to uh, make it louder and bigger and wider and pairing that with a fairly simple drum kit uh, it didn't look like there's a lot of uh, extra frills to it and just making some really nice electronic style music uh, and it's just it is groovy it is infectious it is fun it brings a smile to my face. It is just a joy listening uh, to this trio perform. And so being that it's techno or dancey oriented, uh, the very similar idea that I thought about the last time I heard them is that there really isn't a lot of complexity or variety to the song. They really do just kind of dance around between two or three ideas and follow a pretty standard um, song structure while adhering to a similar vibe or theme throughout the song. And it really is just there to provide something to dance to and to sound fun and bring joy. At least that's what I'm getting from the two songs I've heard from them. So I don't know how in-depth this analysis will be, but there are a couple of things, at least on the performance side, that I want to talk about, and possibly um, an idea or two on the music side that I'm going to dive into as well. Now, performance. So, something I didn't get last time I checked them out, which all I got was the album cover, I think, is what I listened to last time. And I almost did that this time as well. I almost used the Bandcamp link because I prefer the higher quality audio from Bandcamp. But I saw there was a music video, and I saw that it was showcasing the musicians, and I didn't get to see that in the live stream, so I was uh, I figured I'd go for that. And what, what new light it brings to this. So, um, first of all, just constantly playing like this is, it's not something you usually think about too often, but much like any performative aspect of using your mouth, whether it's speaking or singing, uh, I'm sure growling or doing uh, fry vocals or using any sort of aerofoam, uh, it's, it's going to dry your mouth out, right? And these guys are nonstop playing, especially when you take into the uh, account of a full concert. Um, it's very different than being in a jazz band or an orchestra or anything with just a larger amount of performers where you aren't going to be playing all of the time. You're going to have breaks, whether your instrument is just not needed or you're playing 
uh, a sparser line that's meant to fill in the spaces that another instrument's playing. Um, it's it's very different playing a song where you are not only one out of a small set of instruments, but the only instrument. It's just these two these two guys. One of them is playing a foundational line. One of them is playing the melody line, and neither of them get a chance to have a break or have a rest because of the style of music they're playing. It is techno. It is dance music. It doesn't really allow for moments of uh, for moments of the song to breathe. You'll if, even just listening to this song alone. There are some moments that have a rest that allow them to take a breath to repeat the idea or to get into the next section. But for the most part, there is no extended element of resting for either of these instruments. So their mouth is going to get dry. It's going to get tired, just like playing guitar. Uh, you know, we talk about a lot of rock and metal bands being constant attack or uh, I suppose constant playing. There aren't a lot of rests in rock and metal either, unless you get into something genty and, uh, you know, there's this, uh, a core part of the style is silence versus sound and having these uh, intermittent breaks. But a lot of rock and metal is just about constantly creating sound, which, you know, we talk about, especially when we get into faster or more technical genres, uh, thrash and, and, and death and black metal, you know, we talk about chops and we're talking about usually, you know, the right arm chops, uh, I guess it'd be more forearm actually, maybe, um, of constantly playing, uh, tr uh, tremolo picking, right? And the same thing's going on here, uh, to properly play an aerophone instrument, you have to have good embouchure, which is basically just the muscles in, in the mouth and the cheeks. Um, so there's definitely going to be an aspect of uh, endurance, muscular endurance when playing something like the saxophone for an extended set. You know, you're talking 30, 40 minutes of just you, nothing else to help cover it up um, or not necessarily cover up, but have another instrument to, you know, take your place for a second so you can uh, relax. So there's definitely an endurance aspect there, especially when playing something like this, where it might not necessarily be constant playing, but there is a technical aspect to the performance of it that really you don't get a chance to stop. You're constantly utilizing those muscles to create the sound. Uh, there's also, unlike guitars or violins or uh, you know, a lot of the instrumentation we tend to hear in rock and metal, there's also the endurance of uh, somebody's respiratory system, right? Uh, you know, some of these sections are, uh, there, there's places to take breaths between notes, but there is that one line that the lead saxophonist played that was four bars long, and he, he had a breath point on beat three or four of that fourth bar, and that was it. Everything else had to be done in a, in a full breath. And it didn't sound like there was any circulatory breathing. I haven't heard anything that would imply that in the two songs that I've listened to from them. It's possible that one or both of the saxophonists in this group can perform extended circulatory breathing. But, I mean, like I talked about in the Colin Stetson video, it's not a skill that is easy to learn. It's not a skill that's easy to master, and it's not a skill that is easy at all to keep up for extended periods of time. So uh, I'm going to wager that there is just some phenomenal breath control at play here that allowed uh, the, the saxophonist to keep up the volume and the intensity of the section without taking a breath or using circulatory breathing at all and performing this multiple repetitions. He had this four bar phrase that he did like three or four times in a row. So yeah, then you, like I mentioned, uh, the video brought about a new appreciation for this because they're not just sitting up there. It isn't like a jazz performance where they're sitting in front of a, a microphone and just playing and then they go and sit down after their solo or whatever. Uh, these guys are up there and putting on a show. They're jumping around. They're they're running across the stage. The one guy did like, <laughs> like he wanted to do some sort of uh, uh, 
kung fu kick or something. Uh, and you know, doing all this is going to impact the respiratory system because it requires oxygen to get to your muscles while you're also trying to get oxygen into your instrument to play all of this. And it just, it puts the whole performative aspect on another level for me. It is just uh, completely wild what these guys do and the, the kind of intensity they put into their music while what it sounds like to me, this is probably a studio recording put on top of uh, live footage, but you know, I, I, I guess what I'm going to have to do next is look at some live, actual live footage and see how they perform live while doing all this and hearing if there's any fluctuation to their performance. I don't think there's going to be. Um, I, I, I just kind of think that they put in the time and energy and effort into training their bodies and honing it to be able to do this at, at such a high level. And it just, it just, it's phenomenal. It, my jaw drops whenever I think about uh, the kind of work that they're putting into putting these performances together. Not to mention the endurance of the fingers. The saxophone has way too many keys on it. <laughs> I'm a trumpeter. We have three. <laughs> that is it. We utilize our embouchure a lot more than I think uh, saxophones do to achieve certain pitches and ranges. Uh, whereas the saxophone is a lot of knowing combinations. Like, it, it's an arcane device to me. You have to memorize all these weird uh, finger placements for like every note through every octave. And I know there's some overlap and there's probably some embouchure elements that, um, uh, you know, help change octaves and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not, I've, I've tried to play read it instruments a dozen times in my life. I can't make a sound out of them. So I've never gotten to the point where I've actually learned the notes, but my sister did play uh, tenor sax and, uh, you know, I, I've watched her play, and we've played together in bands before. And it is just, like I said, it's it's arcane to me, the amount of different finger positions and the amount of keys on this instrument. So, you know, having to play some of these faster bits is also going to be uh, an endurance test uh, on the fingers as well. It is just phenomenal thinking about the performance side of this this uh, three three-piece group right here. Not to mention the drummer plays saxophone too. Like, th that came out of left field. Was not expecting that. Blown away. Absolutely love it. Now, on the musical side, uh, like I said, there isn't really a lot I can talk about. We've already talked about the uh, that four-bar run. I do want to talk about a little bit uh, of the drumming. I think the drumming complements a lot of this really well. So... In all of these sections, there tends to be, at least to me, it looks like a template. We have a lower range saxophone playing something more rhythmic, really working more on the rhythmic aspect rather than the musical aspect. There are changes, uh, sometimes every four bars he'll pick a different note to play, but for the most part he sticks on a note and plays more of a bass line element, laying down a, a rhythmic structure uh, a rhythmic foundation while also sticking to a single note that the other saxophonist is going to play over to create dyads and kind of give an illusion of chordal ideas. Because unlike a rhythm guitar, which can play an entire chord underneath a solo guitar or looking at something a little bit more traditional with a piano accompaniment uh, performing chords under a solo uh, instrument, the saxophone can only play one note at a time. So it really is more about this uh, illusion of a chord rather than actually playing chords. And by uh, playing a single note and occasionally moving up to a new note and moving up to a new note and having this progression of notes, not necessarily a chord progression, but possibly the root of a chord progression, playing the roots of, of the three chords or four chords, um, it can call up into the listener's mind um, and kind of have the brain fill in the rest of it based on what the lead um, saxophone is playing. And it's not something that requires theory to do. If you've, Especially since they're utilizing a lot of standard uh, chordal ideas. They're not really playing around with anything interesting. 
or unique or well, nothing unique. Every chord's been played. Uh, but just odd or different or not mainstream, something a little bit more experimental as far as chords and modes. They're really sticking with uh, some of the, the primary popular chords in a lot of popular music. So when you hear them and you hear the notes that the other saxophone is playing, you're going to kind of tap into your knowledge of other songs that might sound similar and fill in these blanks. So we have this simple foundational idea, then we have our lead instrument or our lead saxophone playing something moving. There's direction to it, even though it's cyclical. We're looking at loop-based ideas. Uh, there's forward momentum, there's forward direction, there's flow. We have notes that uh, change pitch, go higher and lower. And we have different rhythmic elements in it as well. Um, and then the drum comes in and augments the rhythmic aspect of that foundational saxophone. They either play along with it or syncopate against it in order to create stronger elements of groove. And that is what happens in every single section of this song. And if I remember correctly, it was like 90% of the other song I listened to. That one had a bit more of a, an unusual song structure to it. I remember something odd happening in the bridge, but I don't remember what specifically it was. I don't even remember the name of the song. I'm definitely going to have to check these guys out more, though. Um, but yeah, so that simple idea can be applied to every part of this song, other than when the drums cut out and we get that extra saxophone part. Uh, but yeah, so they take this one idea and they run with it, right? They change up what the foundation is. Sometimes it is a single note. Sometimes it's a note that moves every bar or so. Um, they change up the rhythmic aspect. Sometimes the rhythmic aspect is a bit, or some, the rhythmic, the lead aspect, the melodic one. Sometimes it is a little bit more rhythmic. Sometimes it's just uh, fast and fancy, kind of showing off a little bit with the speed and the breath control. Uh, and kind of dances around these ideas, but the role hasn't changed. We have our foundational saxophone, we have our lead saxophone, and then the drummer's in the background and fluctuates between various ideas, like I said, of holding down a metronome and embellishing rhythmic aspects a little bit. And it just works so well. They have a strong sense of how to be groovy, uh, how to write music that makes people want to move, uh, move their feet and dance to. We saw a lot of people in the video jumping up and down. Um, it is, I mean, I don't think I stopped moving. It is, there is something infectious about the rhythmic combinations of stuff that they're creating. Plus, like I mentioned, with the lead uh, saxophone, just writing something that is joyous. Uh, it's really happy and uh, carefree. And some of that's going to come from the chord and the note choices and the note relationships. But there's also something a little funky about the rhythms that they're using in the lead element as well. That really just, it taps into this uh, groove aspect. Uh, and it all just comes together really well. Um, I think that kind of uh, hits on everything I wanted to talk about. The performance, uh, the roles, and how they layer and structure a section. And um, yeah, that's really about it. Oh, and then the, the drum ornamentation, man. I got I got to talk about that just a, a hair bit. There wasn't a lot going on, but every time it came in, I loved it. Whether it was uh, the little hi hat rolls, or the switching to the alternating opening closed hi hat hits, or there was one one part in that section when uh, when he's going between the opening closed hi hats. Um, it was at the end, and it was like a little mini fill, but it was more of an ornamentation because we didn't get this massive fill. It was just at the end of this four bar phrase, instead of hitting the hi-hat, he went over to one of the larger cymbals uh, and did this nice little uh, eighth note pattern on the bell of it, and it was just perfect. Um, so yeah, absolutely love what the drummer's doing. It's, it's simple, it's not flashy, but there are tasteful embellishments here and there that I think just work extremely well at amplifying, like I said, the core vibes of this of this style, the, the danciness, the infectiousness, the joy that comes out of it, um, and just finds a, a, a really nice rhythmic way of doing that stuff with a drum kit. Mm, one final thing, final, final this time. Um, you know, I think it's easy to dismiss 
uh, this group, or at least I find it easy to dismiss the group, which is not something that I have joy in saying, but two songs that I've listened to, and their bread and butter is writing these simple ideas that just work. They work with this uh, rhythm, with this groove, with this joy, this infectiousness, this this happy element. But it's also very simple. There's a lot of repetition, uh, both on a small level with having riff-based ideas, loop-based ideas, uh, and on the larger level when we look at uh, structure, they hit that hook like four times in this song. Um, and then the verse section was utilized two or three times. So there wasn't a lot of variety in the sections to create uh, anything structurally uh, as far as looking at the whole song other than sort of bouncing back and forth between an A, B, A, B section. But one thing that I absolutely love, and I mentioned this at the end, when they hit a point when they were creating dyads. It wasn't really about a foundation versus a melody. They were both playing these whole notes, I think it was. Maybe it was half notes. Um, but they were holding a note out for a little longer, a lot longer than the eighth note syncopation stuff they were playing earlier. And we were getting these really spicy, jazzy uh, dyads. And I absolutely loved it. I think we actually had a third instrument at this point, but I don't remember seeing it in the video. So I'm not sure um, if that was just a music video thing. And it just wasn't being shown because I noticed that uh, what was being shown was not always what was being played. Um, or maybe it was just a studio thing where they have the extra affordability of one person playing two tracks, that kind of idea. Um, but yeah, so we had some really spicy ideas going on in there. And I love that little, um, the little flourish. It shows me that they have a stronger concept of music theory or at least specifically chord theory than their music lets on and that they understand what they're making with the music and they don't overcomplicate it they understand exactly who they are and what their audience is what their audience are coming to them for um so you know i like that because like i said on the surface it's a very simple song and i think at least for me like i said i find it easy to just dismiss them as uh, people who, you know, possibly, you know, hypothetically might really love electronic music, but just want to play saxophones or whatever for a gimmick. And they can play these really simple saxophone ideas. Um, but they do express a little bit of, uh, extended understanding of music. Uh, and that, that helps me at least, um, view them as more musically inclined which it's not fair to say that like it really isn't I hate that my mind goes here but uh, there's just something about hearing simple music that it's the absence of something that makes it that makes me think that it's not there at all and that's not fair to, to artists like this but um, like I said at least for me I enjoy hearing that little moment and it reminds me, oh, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Just because they're not playing complex things doesn't mean they can't. Um, and while I don't think they should have to do that in order for me to, to remember that idea, I'm glad that they do and, and put me in check like that. <laughs> uh, because I need it sometimes. You know, I'm not perfect. I try to be critical instead of cynical when I can. But, you know, I'm human. I, I Sometimes I listen to something simple and I'm like, oh, is that all you got? And like I said, that's not fair to artists, but it's uh, it's a personal shortcoming that I have to get over. And I think I've made some really great progress with that over the last two years. We've listened to a lot of music that I would have dismissed prior to doing this channel. And actually, I have been a bit dismissive of music earlier in this channel's life. Um, and I think I have made progress coming around to different styles of music. Um, and this is one of those learning situations for me, just to try to keep that in mind, that just because something is missing doesn't mean that the artist can't utilize it. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Moon Hooch's Candlelight. This is where you guys come in. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this one or not. Uh, anything that stuck out to you. Maybe you heard something I didn't touch on or you wanted to... Uh, extrapolate on something I did talk about, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Let me know what's going on in your brain. Above the comment section is a description box, and in there is a link for Linktree. 
take you to this menu right here has everything related to the channel as well as me. You can join the Discord server, you can support the channel through Patreon, you can follow me on Twitter, you can check out what music I've been making, what music I've been listening to, you can pick up some merch, all sorts of stuff that's in there. Above the description box, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I'd greatly appreciate all three of those. We have one more video coming out 15 seconds ago. <laughs> It's our creator request for today, which is where a band gets in contact with me and asks me to check out some music. If I remember correctly, it's a metalcore band from Germany. Uh, I'm not sure if it's more the modern metalcore or older metalcore that was heavier. The modern one's more melodic. Kind of had that confusion when we did metalcore week. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to, to dig into that and see what's going on. If that excites you too, go ahead and, and uh, click that link it should be in your subscription feed if you're subscribed to me if you're not why aren't you subscribed to me <laughs> anyways i don't know where i'm going with this uh i'll be back not tomorrow but on monday 5 p.m eastern standard time 10 p.m utc as usual i don't remember what we're doing next week but it'll be a surprise to all of us i guess <laughs> Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.